My custom, my in-laws, what should I do? Hi, my name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist and relationship coach with a doctorate in human sexuality. And I'm from Arrow's Coaching. That's EROScoaching.com. Um, I work with a lot of clients who have uh, conflicts with their in-laws. And uh, sometimes you can feel like even though you're marrying someone, you've inherited the whole set of uh, different parents and family. And uh, the... The differences in the culture can be quite um, shocking. And uh, this is where your spouse comes from. And it's very telling of their values, attitudes, and beliefs. And sometimes it's very different from yours. And so I get couples coming in and saying things like, oh, nobody should be doing that. Um, and I came to this conclusion that people do what they do and people believe what they believe because of where they came from. So your in-laws um, that you've inherited uh, is a big telltale sign of what kind of a spouse you have. So they give you clues. And instead of looking at it as um, cursed, uh, look at it as a choice that you have. You, have, you definitely have a choice of whether you want to be friendly and allies with your in-laws or if you want to alienate them and be their enemy. It's entirely up to you. And of course, I'm not going to be about to tell you that uh, you should alienate them and be uh, enemies with them because this is definitely not going to be advantageous for you or your relationship with your spouse. Let me explain more. There are two things that you can do. And uh, the first one is that you reframe in your mind, I can't stand them, to the possibility that they can be your allies. Think about it. Um, when it comes to work and life, we definitely want to have some kind of a separation. And sometimes when it comes to your work, even though some of the, your colleagues are your friends, um, but when it comes to personal life, your personal matters, the people who really know your spouse, it's really your in-laws. And so they can be your allies. So that's the first thing. They can actually get through to your husband or your wife um, in a way that you cannot. And uh, they, they, they know this person. And um, there's this, uh, you know, saying, flesh and blood. So definitely, if they love and adore you and um, they they are able to communicate with you and you vice versa, no matter how the differences are, by reframing that you understand that it is not advantageous to you at all to alienate or be enemies with them. So thinking of them as allies, thinking of them as your new best friend, that they are the people who will have um, the values of supporting your marriage, wanting you to succeed, and though there might be certain things that they say or do that irks you, they are of an older generation. They are not like your parents. Don't expect them to be like your parents because you, you married this person who is probably your opposite. And likewise, because it's your opposite or she your opposite, um, their parents uh, are definitely also going to be quite different from your parents. So when we say things like, oh, they shouldn't be like that, we're making assumptions, we're making a value judgment, and we are making us right and them wrong. Rather than, than do that, see as a different perspective. So the first thing that I can say is think of them as your allies. Okay, They are going to be your best allies, the people who really fight for and defend and support your marriage. This is your personal life. You do want to have some separation with work. And sometimes even your friends won't understand your spouse as much as your in-laws, allies. The second thing that you want to really bear in mind is this. When you complain about your in-laws, who is your spouse closer to? You like to think it is you, and then there's them, your in-laws. But your spouse um, grew up with them. Your spouse loves and has a duty of care towards them, especially if it's uh, Asian. And so what you do when you complain about your spouse is you're actually creating tension and stress for your spouse. Just like a parent 
would love all their children because the children are different. They would love them differently. But none of the parents, I would think, would actually be willing to say which, parent, which child they love more. Likewise, by asking your, par- your spouse to choose between their parents and you, this is a really unfair request. So the second thing I want you to bear in mind is you need to be uh, looking at them from your husband's or wife's perspective, which is that when you set yourself up against them, you're creating stress and tension for your spouse. And by this, it, it, it creates resentment, anger, frustration for your spouse. But what you're doing is instead of having the love that you want in your relationship, by default of this issue that you have with the parents, you are creating unhappiness for somebody that you love very, very much. So if you love somebody, you want them to be happy uh, in their personal life, you take care of their needs, and maybe you cook for them, and you do all these things for your spouse. That's the physical part, that's the emotional part, that's the psychological part. You want to, you want to make sure that your spouse gets to be the best version of themselves that they want to be, I hope not sabotaging them. And so by having conflict and um, negativity towards their parents, it's essentially almost making sure that this person has to choose between this side or the other side. So these are two things that you want to think about when it comes to what happens um, in uh, your relationship with your in-laws. The first one being that you want to, you want to think about them as your allies and they can get through to your spouse a way that probably you cannot. You can learn a lot about your spouse through your in-laws and it's much better for you to have them on your side. The second one is whenever you have tension with your in-laws, you're creating stress on your beloved And if you say this is your beloved, then there are certain things that you need to do in order to be able to make sure that your spouse has the best support possible, including with regards to indoors. And um, you need to make the best of whatever situation that you are in. So if you feel that you still have unresolved issues and you still have past pain that has happened, that you felt that your spouse didn't stand up for you or protect you and you really want to work through these issues, it's really important to get the support rather than let the resentment faster because that's not going to help your relationship at all. So you do want to consider marriage counseling, for instance. Okay, so this is Martha uh, sharing with you my, my ideas with regards to in-laws and i love to hear from you. You can post your comments below or if you're shy or you have further questions, you can always email me at ask at arrowscoaching.com.